welcome to my channel Haley Marie Vintage. Today I am going to be talking about my recent experience at the Sewing and Stitchery Expo, which is also, we call it Sew Expo here. It is a big regional sewing and fiber arts conference. It's super fun. This is my first time I have ever gone and I just kind of want to take you guys through the experience, what classes I took. So for this video, it's going to, first I'm going to talk about the classes I took. I took I think six classes there and then kind of like the culture of the conference and then the shopping and the haul so if you're only interested in the haul I'll have the scrolly bar it marked here if that's all you care about but I did take a lot of really fun classes that I want to share with you so that is the plan for this video and hopefully you'll enjoy this kind of content it's kind of a weird one-off content for my channel I've not really done anything like this before but I've also never I have been on retreats with like 10 other women who sew but I've never been to like a big giant conference where like it's hundreds and hundreds of people who sew and are passionate about fiber arts so it was really interesting and I wanted to share that experience on my channel because I didn't even think something like this existed until I talked to other sewists and heard about it. Just want to put it on your radar that you might somewhere regionally have like a giant sewing and fiber arts conference and it might be a really fun thing for you to attend. First we are going to dig into the classes. So for the classes, they have different like needle readings, one being just kind of like a lecture style class and four needles being like a four hour in-depth skill class. So my first day I took two four needle classes. My second day, I think I took a two needle class and a two one needle classes. And my last day I took a three needle class. So I got the full, I think, range of classes, but these are pretty broad spectrum classes. So the first class I took, spoiler alert, it was my favorite was, ow. I'm still getting the hang of how to clip the ends of the pine needles so I don't stab you, but pine needle basketry. So this is all made out of pine needles. It smells amazing. And this has been one of my favorite things that I've learned in recent years that's new. It kind of reminds me of a combo of crocheting and sewing, but crocheting in a, like a really mindless manner where I don't have to count stitches. This has been my, what I do at night when I watch TV projects now. And I am absolutely obsessed. I'm almost out of pine needles from the class. I'm gonna have to go either forage or order some more, but I absolutely adore it. So this was a four hour class where we basically learned how to make this. In the class I only made the bottom part, like the medallion is what they call it, and I've started building the sides on my own in my home, and it's become, yeah, one of my favorite things. I just, all I want to do every day when I wake up is weave more pine needles into a basket. Oh, hi! Do you like the pine needle basket too? Yeah, isn't it cute? If you knock a teacup down, I'm gonna yell at you. Come over here. This was my favorite. I thought the teacher was also really good. She knew, normally teaches high schoolers and middle schoolers, which is why I think she was really good, is that she teaches regularly. And I can't wait to make many more pine needle baskets in my lifetime. My classes, I would say, I almost like would break down into two categories. One being like a technical class and another like a dying art, as in like D-I-E-N-G or D-Y-N-I-G. Wow, we're pointing out that I can't spell, but like as in an art that is disappearing. I don't actually think pine needle basketry is disappearing. I know a lot of people my age who do it. It originates from indigenous cultures and indigenous cultures still practice it. So it's not, I don't think it's dying. I do have one class I went to that I do think is actually a dying technique and skill. And uh, honestly, I didn't like it. So it will die with me. <laughs> Somebody else might pick it up, but I personally will not continue it. The second spooky, you are going to fall and you are going to be so sad. Child. Okay. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Anyway, the next class I took was a pattern fitting class. This was like a pattern tissue fitting class, which I thought was really helpful for me. So out of it, I got, uh, we worked on like, uh, I don't know if they're half scale models or exactly what, but I have all these different adjustments that I learned how to make. Like this one here is a rounded shoulder adjustment, which I actually think I'll probably use. And then I also did sleeve adjusting. This one here, round booty adjustment, which is something I would need, or round belly. And then I learned how to do a full bust adjustment, a smaller bust adjustment, a shoulder blade like adjustment, and a Y bust adjustment. So this was super informative and really, 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 really helpful for me. I have never really actually fit a pattern before and they kind of showed us, I would need to copy the pattern over because obviously I'm not gonna destroy like a like 
80 year old pattern to do this but I thought it was really interesting technique and really helped me understand more of the fundamentals of like pattern fitting which is something I'd really like too because as I as my body has changed kind of over the last year there's just I've noticed a couple consistent fit issues in my patterns that I really want to fix and I learned actually two patterning methods the next day I took a all about sleeves class that was all about different adjustments you can make to sleeves sleeves have kind of been like my biggest fit issue recently which is why I took the class and this one was a so the other one was like a slash and spread pattern like fit method and this one here is like a seam line adjusting pattern method so like in theory the sleeve line never change like the stitching line never changes so you don't have to do as many alterations to as many pieces for me the slash one made a lot more sense even though I know it's imperfect it was just really interesting to learn both these things and I also learned like about a lot of different sleeve type issues you could have so that was really really great to learn I'm not convinced that this is the technique I'll use but I think it's good to like know a couple different techniques that are out there and the instructor was super super informative and great for actually all three of these classes instructor a plus I don't have anything to show you for my next class but I took a machine embellishing class that showed you how to use your machine to stitch on beads and sequins which was really helpful because with some of my chronic pain stuff I just was looking for like an easier way on my body to embellish something and add beading and this class honestly the techniques were genius she doesn't even have a website I can't point you into any resources I plan on using these beading techniques though on my channel in the future so you'll maybe learn them from me there but it was just so smart the way she used her machine to sew on beads brilliant once you understand the basics of it it's really really simple but I didn't it just hadn't occurred to me so yeah hopefully I'll show you that sometime on this channel so those were and that was a um just a I think one needle class it was just like a lecture like a 45 minute lecture and yeah once um once kind of my switch flipped and I learned this technique I was like oh my god I can do so many things with this next class I also don't have anything to show you from I took an ice dyeing class and calling this a class is kind of being nice. I don't mean any disrespect towards the instructor, but it, it, it also happened like it was the week that the closet historian dropped her ice dyeing video. So I had just watched a really thorough and great explanation on ice dyeing. And I went to this class expecting to like learn more. And this person described ice dyeing without ever having any photos of the process. She was just orally describing it to us with a written handout that matched what she was saying. And she only showed us like the end products and her, the way she ice dyed, I didn't like. It was like a really frustrating class because I can say if I hadn't already seen videos of the closet historian ice dyeing, which I'll link that in the eye, I would have had no idea what was happening in this class and it would have been super frustrating. And honestly, these classes cost money. This cost me $15 to sit in this lecture hall for 45 minutes and have like nothing explained to me well. It was like to the point, which I do think this is out of line and not okay that like a woman in the audience was like just explain how to do it because the instructor kept getting off track it was it was a hot mess the the person in the audience was really rude in the way she spoke to the instructor about how to do it and it was awkward and just not a great class experience so that was the only class I took that I wasn't super excited about the last class I took all I have to show you is a really terrible sampler uh embroidery is not my largest and best skill I took it's a technique called a Brazilian embroidery it's something I learned about a few years ago and I've always been really fascinated with it's using rayon thread I have I'm not very good at it so my sampler is pretty not great this is the one that the teacher did such a good job the teacher was excellent it's not the teacher's fault so I will never do this craft again the I don't enjoy embroidery enough as is and the extra complication level with Brazilian embroidery isn't worth it to me and the problem with the way Brazilian embroidery works is it's actually I wanted to learn it as like a clothing technique that I could stitch on my clothes however from this class I learned that it was not a good technique to apply to clothing because you have to have a poly blend otherwise you'll you have to like tug on the fabric hard enough you'll rip it if it doesn't have polyester in it and I don't really want to sew with polyester the thread isn't color fast so it'll bleed when you wash it so it's just not the right craft for me it's incredibly beautiful I took some footage that I'll put in here of the some different Brazilian needlework so if you do love doing like basic needlepoint for like pillows or quilts or stuff like that actually I think this is a fantastic technique but for me as a garment sewer it's not a good fit but the teacher was so good she cracked me up so much she had a ba bag of chocolate and she's like you just eat the chocolate when you get a little bit stressed while learning and I like really appreciated that approach of kind of like reinforcing positively while learning something hard because even though everybody in this class was an experienced embroiderer we all had a hard time with the skills so it was just it was really fascinating it was a great class I'm so glad I went because I have been so curious about this 
this technique for a really, really long time, and it was definitely worth the money and time I spent at this class. However, this is not a skill that I'm going to continue to learn just because it's not not my cup of tea and I hate saying that because this instructor was so lovely and I loved her. She was this like older woman who gave zero Fs, just like clearly like lived her life, loved her craft, loved her grandkids. Like she was so fabulous and I wanted to love Brazilian embroidery the way she does, but I don't. Uh, however, she's an amazing artist. That is my classes in summary. So from my classes, you can maybe get an idea of the culture, but I think my youngest instructor was probably in her early 50s. 50s and probably the oldest instructor would have been like late 70s. So this conference skewed a lot older. I've never been in a space with hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of elderly people and that causes some interesting like cultural collisions. First I want to say I'm going to talk about the positive later but uh, I'm going to start with the negative but I do want to say overall everyone I met at this conference was super lovely and I did meet some younger people at this conference. I want to be clear I met people in their 40s and stuff too. Just I would say I was in probably like the youngest like 2% in this building. Saturday there were more younger people but there were people there with their moms and stuff so it I don't know different vibe on Saturday than it was on Friday because this was such an elderly conference I could just sometimes I could just feel the entitlement you know like someone was complaining about their second house and I'm like I would kill to own one house and somebody else was like well my craft room the light is just really not as good as my sewing room and I'm sitting there and I'm like I'll probably never be able to afford a three-bedroom place <laughs> so like I don't know, you know, it just, it just, they, they, a lot of them felt very out of touch. And like, just some of the things they got worked up about or like yelling at the instructors. I've never been in a classroom where I've seen an instructor yelled at like that, like with adults. Of course, as a child, I saw it, but when you pass a certain age, it's no longer acceptable. I mean, it shouldn't ever be acceptable for you to yell at an instructor, but especially at a certain age, it is really extra not acceptable. So it was just kind of wild. There was just kind of a lot of like older people entitlement in the room. <laughs> I want to end that by saying I met so many really, 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 really amazing fiber arts crafters. A lot of the people who sat next to me on classes were so fun to talk to and so enthusiastic about what they sewed or just so open to like learning new skills, especially in the pattern classes. The patterning classes were hard. These were not like just like let's go watch a lecture and have fun like these. These were tough classes that were hard to comprehend the concepts and I always really appreciate. I feel like there's just a stereotype that you stop learning at a certain age and I love how many women that are very like old are coming into these classes and learning new skills and super excited about it because I I think it's a stereotype we really need to stop making of older people not being able to learn new skills because older people are just as capable and shouldn't be looked down upon and also they have skills to pass on. Obviously I got some really really great skills from a bunch of older people at this conference and then at lunch I had a really lovely conversation with a mother-daughter duo who were probably around my, my parents age-ish, the mom, and then her mother was around what my grandparents would be at. It was so fun to talk to them because both of them had been sewing for so long and they had all these stories and I just think there's like a really nice rich tradition around being around older people that we miss out when we don't have intergenerational connections. Even though like I will say like I do have the critique of some of the entitlement of older people, I also still think it's really important to make sure as younger people we are spending time in older people's spaces because there's a lot to learn. There's just there's still stuff to learn and it's always really helpful to have dialogues between generations and so if you have like the privilege of being able to deal with being in those spaces. Definitely highly recommend and yeah and I really like I said I enjoyed like 95% of the people I met. It was just that one like weird 5% who were really really vocal and obnoxious that I was just like get a grip on reality please. <laughs> Overall it wasn't bad at all and yeah it was a lot of fun. I love talking to I talked to a bunch of the vendors for a while. I talked to the other people in my class I really enjoyed. I sat next to somebody in the needle basket class and we talked about all the different crafts we do. And she was laughing because she's like, oh, I thought this would be a cool thing to pick up for like when I'm hiking. But like turns out this is not really a great hiking activity. We kind of have to forage the needles and we just kind of laughed about how it wasn't necessarily what we expected, even though we both really enjoyed the class and it was fun to learn about what she did. Also, the fun part about it being a regional conference, we had people from like Canada, Idaho, Montana, Oregon. So there are a bunch of people from a bunch of different states at this conference and I always think it's fun when people come together. And also it was on the fairgrounds, which meant fair food. And I love the culture of like fairgrounds 
underground stuff because I love the food and it just kind of has this like fun atmosphere. It does mean the classrooms were very, very cold because fairgrounds are really made to be inhabited during the summer. And yeah, again, I just want to emphasize like 95% of the people I met were so amazing and they were so amazing they easily counters that like 5% of really obnoxious people. I just do think it's important to note that like if you're going to one of these conferences, you are going to interact with a lot of obnoxious people because they're very vocal. And oh, before I forget, the last thing to know in my pattern fitting class, the second one. The first one I felt like was very body positive, but the second one, first of all, trigger warning before I get into all this. Like, just like there were a lot of women openly talking really negatively about their bodies, which made me really sad because I, if there's one thing I hope for myself when I'm that age, it's that I love my body where it's ever it's at. Our bodies are not meant to look like we're 18 the rest of our lives. And it's been something like I have talked about some body changes in the last year. I'm entering my late 20s and my body should shift. I am not a teenager or a young adult. Well, I mean, I am still a young adult, but like I should not have the body. Body I had when I was 18 and I would actually be worried about my health if I did. And so it was just a bummer to see all these women in their 60s and 70s being really hard on their body because it's like you've lived a whole full life and your body has carried you through that and it was extra hard for me to see the um, instructor called up a woman and like mentioned she had slim arms and this woman's like oh my arms are so big what are you talking about and her arms are like probably one of the slimmest arms in the room and so then it by proxy makes all the other women with bigger arms probably feel bad and so there is a bit of a fat phobic culture at like the pattern fitting classes or specifically the safe one I went to. The other one I went to, again, very body positive, but just something to be aware of if you're easily triggered. These type of like, I would maybe stick with an online course where they've probably edited a lot of that fat phobia out because you aren't having like the live interactions. Vaguely kind of close to that on the positive side. Um, I feel like we talk a lot about like dad and grandpa jokes, but not enough about grandma jokes. I was so amused by, oh, they were hilarious. These, these older women were so funny. We were talking about a pattern system that the instructor was like doesn't really work and the guy who built it was a guy and someone from the back was like well, it's because a man did it <laughs> and I just thought that was really funny and then there were lots of like talking about because like well they were still like well I just talked about they were still very like conscious about their bodies I also just loved the kind of like rip roaring I don't give a shit type of attitude they had at the same time I just thought it was delightful and the gossip the, I don't know it was just also fun I got to hear all about like the behind the scenes of of the drama that went down behind So Expo this year and stuff like that. And I'm not gonna get into the details because I don't wanna out anybody for gossiping, but it was hilarious. I do feel comfortable saying this as a UX web designer. The website for this conference was it was so funny to watch a bunch of like 60, 70, 80 year olds all like get together and bash this website. I think it's a really big misconception that older people don't understand how good technology works versus bad. But anytime I ever hear somebody say, oh, well, they don't get it because of their age in a room where I am as a web designer, I'm gonna be like, looky here. I watched this gang of like 60 to 80 year old women identify exactly what was wrong with a website. Like don't underestimate and undersell your users because of their age like that. That's not acceptable. Now I'm a perfect example to point to and for me I'm being a web designer as a job it was so delightful to hear them all talk about this website. <laughs> But anyway, that con that concludes all the like culture classes, stuff like that part. Now what you maybe have all been waiting for, I'm gonna talk about what I brought back. So there were, I don't remember how many vendors, but there were a crazy amount of vendors at this conference. There was one big building and then a second smaller, but still a big building. A lot of the apparel, booths canceled at the last minute due to various circumstances so there wasn't a ton of fabric that was like for apparel however on my last day I came across this beautiful vintage fabric thing so we'll get into those fabrics at the very end but first there were a lot of like vintage button booths and then there were some really really nice European laces there so that is what I'm going to focus in on first I don't remember exactly how I organized these so bear with me so first off I got these I'll link if they have a website I'll link it down below this is a doll lace place that is specifically for like doll dresses like American Girl but they had just some really beautiful like nice fine laces I'll slowly be circling them up up here so you can actually see these but these are gorgeous they're soft they're 100% cotton and they range between 30 35 and 658 a yard they're definitely cheaper in person than they are online however again check out their shop if you're looking for just really nice fine delicate lace as I have learned more in the last year, I feel much more confident doing stuff like insert lace or inset lace. I never know which it's called. So I picked up a bunch of laces there. I also picked up on a bunch of European laces, but we're gonna hit those a little bit later. First, what's in here? What's in here? Oh yes, 
So it's actually really funny. I did a thrift haul, an antique haul two weeks ago, and the woman who has one of my favorite booths at the Auburn Antique Mall, I don't know exactly what it's called, but that's vaguely what it's called. She was at the conference, so I was very excited to meet her because I'm a huge fan of her booth. So, you know, a little bit of a celebrity for me, but of course it meant I bought more things even though I was just at her booth a month ago. First thing I got was these, it's just a needle book, but it had cats on it and I'm a sucker, but I bought it. <laughs> The second thing, I regretted leaving this behind actually at her booth a couple weeks ago. So I was very excited. It's a darning mushroom and I just really liked the flowers and stuff painted on this. I thought it was a gorgeous darning mushroom. So I really, really, really regretted leaving this behind and it was at the Sew Expo. So I picked it up. I had left it behind because they're $35. I went to the Sew Expo with a pretty decent budget because it was for my birthday weekend. So I got the darning mushroom I had been coveting. And then I just got a couple buttons. I had got some porcelain buttons and these are some glass buttons that are like kind of more brownish toned though which you don't see as often so I wanted to pick these up because I think they're really earthy I guess but yeah so that's what I picked up from her booth and that is if you're ever in Auburn there's an antique mall there that she has a giant booth on and it's super organized and wonderful to go through so that is what I picked up from her there all right next up we have a ton of lace so this here they were selling 10 yards for ten dollars of this really really nice cotton laces so I picked these guys all up I'll have all of them kind of slowly cycling through over here but this was just a really good price on really really high quality cotton lace and and I do try to prioritize using cotton or natural fibers in trims and it's sometimes hard to find natural co like cotton trims in real life. A lot of times I have to order them online so I got a little greedy when I found them in person. And this is another one if I can find their website I will link it down below. I do know you have to like you're calling over to Europe and you're gonna talk to somebody to order from them. I will vouch right now for their quality, top notch quality. Super, super beautiful. Another lace I got, I got five yards of this. It kind of reminds me of like a lotus or a like a lily pad flower. I think these are super stunning. It's a really beautiful like light pink lace, super frothy. It's a nylon lace, it was $5 a yard and it's really good quality. And then similarly, this was also $5 a yard, but it's black lace and I did pick up seven yards because I kind of have a vision for this lace, but it's just this really beautiful like floral bouquet black nylon lace these are not na the natural cotton laces that I prefer but I did don't you worry get plenty of those these are some packs of cotton lace I really like the way these package that the the way they package these I'm trying to figure out how I could package my lace like this but not with tissue paper that if it got wet would bleed all over the lace so I'm trying to kind of brainstorm that out if you know of a like like tissue like paper that would show white lace well that would not bleed I guess let me know that's some very specific criteria uh, but these are a bunch of really really gorgeous laces I got two like edge laces where they have just like one kind of more like floral or scalloped side and then one straight side which is where you detach and then I picked up three um inset laces these are stunning I can't wait to use these and because they're 100% cotton I can also dye them if I decide I need to dye them for them to be right for my project. So I'm pretty pumped about these. It was really hard to limit what I bought to what I bought. I wanted to buy everything at this booth. I thought the lace was so gorgeous and hopefully they already have a date for Sew Expo next year. So hopefully the this vendor will be there because I'm not gonna lie, I really dread talking to people on the phone. So I won't be unable to call. <laughs> Um, kind of some random stuff I got. I got the full book by the lecturer I went to by Cindy Rowell. She does not have a website. She only has a email, but I wanted to, I liked the way her uh, workbook was laid out and that you make like samplers and you paste them in the book. So I think that's really cool. And uh, again, like the way she described how to use your machine to be blew my mind. So I wanted to, I guess, support her work in that because it was genius and it makes it, it makes embellishing more accessible for people with like hand issues. And I think that's really, really cool because I haven't felt confident enough to do a ton of beading work because of my hand issues. And so it's exciting to have the potential opportunity. We're going kind of into random tools and stuff. I got uh, some fray check. I came into the conference with a sewing supply list because I knew all the sewing supplies are usually sold at this conference, like at a lower price than if you went to like a Joann's. So I got some fray check. Oh, I got a bunch of refill. Clover is my favorite 
sewing supply brand. So I got their water erasable marker, both fine and thick. This is the blue marker you see me use a ton. It was actually really interesting. I had a conversation with an embroidery artist about how these are actually, so like I see a lot of people use friction or like the iron off ones and I can't voice really why I've never liked them, but they've always just kind of given me the heebie-jeebies. It was interesting talking to embroidery artists because she uses this specifically because it washes all the way out. She said that she doesn't like the friction pens because a lot of times over time you'll maybe see them again because the ink stays in the fabric as opposed to these that are fully water soluble and so it doesn't stay in the fabric. So I feel like weirdly justified in my dislike of friction pens. However, if they work for you, keep using them. I've just always like... I've been freaked out by them forever, so I will not be using them. I will be using these. I'll update these into my Amazon sewing favorite lists if I like them. Nothing goes in that list unless it becomes a favorite. I'll link that list down below. I do get like a little percentage if you do buy off that list. But like I said, I don't put anything on that list that I don't use all the freaking time. So these will not go on there yet. So I'll link those separately with an Amazon link, I guess. And then these ones I do know I really like. This is a Clover, like, it's a marking pencil. That's kind of like a chalk pencil. And they call them Clover Chocopel. And these work really, really well for me. I use these. This is my, like, go-to pencil. And I picked these up because the blue and red one, which is the one I use the most, is almost completely out. And I was feeling very upset because I couldn't find these anywhere. And so when I saw them at the conference, I was pumped. So those were all on my list as well as this was also on my list. This is a bunch of embroidery thread. So I have a very great project coming up. I think it'll come up out next week where I needed a rainbow of embroidery to embroider. It was great because I had quite a few thread booths and I could actually ask like, what would you recommend for this exact project? This is what they recommended to me. I'll talk more about this when the video actually comes out, how I like it and all that jazz, I guess. I was pretty pumped because it came in the rainbow set already because I was like, I'm looking for a rainbow. And the lady was like, oh, we have just the thing. And I was so excited. So now I have my rainbow floss for that project. It's all picked up and ready to go. I also picked up, I picked up a second spool of this too for my pine needle baskets. Um, except for I realize now it's number eight instead of number five. So it won't even work. So I'll hoard it for some other project or for when I get better at pine needle baskets and can use a finer thread. Okay, now I can finally talk about my buttons. So I'm gonna input a clip here. I really liked this booth. She just had buckets and buckets and buckets of bun buttons that she personally, I think, carded. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think she's paying herself well enough for the labor with the prices of these buttons. I limited myself to $60 worth of buttons at this booth, and then I think I also picked up, picked up one thing that was not a button at that booth, but I can't recall what it is. It was something that you've already seen. So these are kind of all the different buttons. I got a bunch of like older looking buttons or buttons that I know are and like like this one's not a vintage button but I thought it was a like nice color scheme that I could use these ones are nice glass buttons I got like some either 1940s like inspired buttons or I think some of these are genuine 1940s she just had a great amount of buttons for pretty good prices. I think most of these stayed under five dollars for the pack which is pretty good when you're looking at like vintage vintage-ish buttons. So I was pretty excited about that. I love these clear ones are great. The most expensive set of buttons I bought was $8 and I can't find them, but I really liked the way she displayed her buttons and I enjoyed shopping with her buttons and stuff like that. That wraps up my buttons lace whatever haul. Now we are gonna jump over to my fabric haul, which I'm so excited to show you. So I'm gonna insert footage here again while I talk about it. So I went to a vintage fabric booth. She does not have a website. She does have an Instagram. I will link that. She just had so much beautiful vintage fabric. I was so stoked. I was like, buy all my money. There it goes. Because I, I was doing so well. I hadn't actually bought that much yet because I hadn't really seen anything that was screaming my name. But then I saw this booth and I'm like, oh no, oh no, I'm in trouble. And I talked with her for like an hour about vintage textiles because we both clearly love vintage textiles. She found, I told her I was obsessed with blue strawberries and she found some fabrics for me that had blue strawberries on them. And she was 100% amazing, lovely, love talking with her. Anyone who can um, keep up with me when talking about vintage textiles, I will always accept a long conversation with. And again, this is what I mean by like, literally like most of the people at this conference were so lovely and it was so fun to talk to them. I, it's very rare that I am in a room with that many fiber artists and it was super fun. She frequents a lot of um, the quilt shows, I guess. So I will, I guess, now be attending quilt shows to shop from her. But let's go ahead and show you what I got there. I don't even know how to go from most to least exciting because I'm so excited about all of these. There's varying yards of these. The smallest is I think two yards and the largest has six. 
five and a half yard. First up, there's this really cute, it's like apples and I think plums fabric, blue and green. Uh, as you guys know, I have a red aversion. So I was excited to find this fabric. I think it's really beautiful. It really reminds me of... I have, I think, some 50s and 60s blouses and patterns like this, and I plan to probably make a blouse with this one. And then I got this gorgeous calico. I put, so I did three different transactions at her booth because we kept talking and I kept looking at fabrics and I kept getting further and further into trouble. But this one is a really nice calico that I plan on making a gunny sacks like dress with that will probably be offset with. I got some pink fabric. Where did it go? Pink fabric to go with it. And then probably I'll use white lace and it'll be so cute and so girly. And I'm so excited about it. This is, I think, one of my smallest yardages. It's this like very neon-y floral fabric. I adore fabrics like these. These are like my favorite vintage fabrics and you don't see them that often, or at least not at good prices. Her prices were pretty good. It was $10 a yard for the stuff that was, I think, 70s and newer, except for the border prints. Border prints were $16 a yard, regardless of era. And then there, her 50s and earlier fabrics were $16 a yard. So I think those are pretty well priced considering the fact that when I I buy fabric modernly a lot of times I'm paying around $14 a yard for the quality I like so I wasn't too bothered by paying that much per yard for vintage fabrics that are no longer in production and you can't find but anyway this is one such fabric and I absolutely adore it this one was one of the blue strawberry fabrics that I think is so cute it has these little navy ones and it's perfect because a navy fabric like this you can patch into a lot of different projects because navy goes with a lot of things at least in my wardrobe so I'm thinking whether I might patch this into I'm gonna make a denim skirt that's kind of gunny sack styled and I think this might be really cute with that but I haven't decided and then this one I was gonna make a dress with like either like a white or a black or a neon color that matches the strawberries it's a blue strawberry pattern again with stripes but then she was like what about overalls and I said genius I'm so glad she suggested overalls with these these will become a pair of overalls and I will love them I was gonna say more than my own child but I have no child children and I will never love anything more than spooky also, we love we love a, we love a fabric genius, and she was truly a fabric genius. So this will become a pair of overalls. They'll probably be shorts because I don't think there's quite enough yardage there for like the full long shebang, but they will become shorts overalls and they will be so cute. This fabric I was gonna leave behind, but I decided I couldn't because look at it. Um, and it's that really beautiful. There's like a type of lawn that was available in like the 60s and 70s that the weight is very specific and I can't find anything like it modernly and I don't it's just it's a very specific and I think there's poly in it it's a poly cotton kind of lawn type thing that was milled a certain way that I just don't think modern fabrics compare with I have not found a fabric that compares with them at all and I have swatched so many lawns over the years so between that and then these colors these colors are absolutely the type of color I love to make stuff out of so I decided to pick it up and It'll probably become a blouse or it'll become a dress with this is kind of like the bonus feature and we're getting down to the last couple and the most exciting this is a beautiful I would guess 40s fabric this feels more 40s than 50s to me because it's kind of a little bit more like feed sacky inspired it is teal and yellow flowers and there are four and a half yards here it is a 36 width so that'll go a little less far than most but I will definitely be able to get a dress out of this and I'm really excited because I think it is so stunning I absolutely love it this was the second I saw it I knew I was buying it and then this this one is a very beautiful border print. They just don't, I feel like, print. This is that, again, that specific, like, very soft lawn weight that I feel like is pretty hard to find nowadays. And then it also has the bonus of the neons that I just feel like neon fabrics aren't as, like, vintage neon fabrics have qualities that modern neon fabrics don't have. And I think it was probably just the way it was printed. I'm betting the way it was printed was terrible for the environment, which is maybe why we don't produce it like this anymore. But uh, this is absolutely gorgeous. The other side of the border print is more of like the small flowers up at the top, but it's a absolutely stunning border print. I plan on, if you guys have seen it on my channel, it's this light blue dress with like big, I think they're like called angel sleeves. And that's what I plan on making with this is probably a shorter version of the dress. That's like more like T length as opposed to like fully to the ground. But that's what I plan on making with this. And that includes this very long, very ranty video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my experience at this conference as well as like the weird bits of footage I have. I really loved going to this conference. It was so amazing to be around so many textile artists who have been doing their craft for 
decades. And I highly recommend, yeah, seeing if you have anything regional like this. And if you're in the Washington area, I'll be there next year. They already have dates on the calendar for next year. I think it's the last, the first weekend of March. So I think it's through the third. Don't 100% quote me on that, but yeah, keep an eye out, I'll be there. Definitely going again because I had so much fun at this one. I will say kind of like real quick wrap up summary, definitely go. Definitely go one day, at least. If there's a class that really interests you, take that class. Know that the quality of instructor might vary. I don't even know how you vet those ahead of time because one of the instructors I adore didn't have a website and one of the, the ending instructor that I thought was really bad has a website. So I don't know. I don't know how you figure out which ones are good, but take a class that interests you if you desire. I did three days. I would not do three days again. I think my max would be two. And they repeat the same classes for four of the days and then there's one day that is just the the four needle classes. So yeah, I, I would not go above two days again. But you know, I also get overwhelmed in crowds really easily and I get very overwhelmed not being at home. So take that with your grain of salt, knowing that I am heavily introverted. Maybe you aren't and this would be a better fit for you to do all five days. And you have to sign up for classes super early. Classes do sell out, so you wanna sign up for them the day they drop. That is my last bit of advice. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe and stay tuned for me making up these projects. I don't have any of these officially on the calendar yet, but I'm sure some of them will begin to enter the calendar. And then as always, if you comment down below or like this video, it really helps me out. And I will see you next time. Bye!